Hey guys, Sherm here, and today I'm going to be testing the Cadillac CN concept in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 at max. This also includes one epic on top speed. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel, as well as my Purple Team Discord. You can find the links to those in the description, as always, and I hope you enjoy the races. Now I know what a lot of you are probably wondering, why the CN? What does this have to do with anything? Well, the CN is one car out of a few, actually, that I made a video of at max a while back, but it wasn't my own. I think this one was by Afik, I'm pretty sure, before I maxed the car myself. But I finally maxed it myself earlier this year, and so I thought I'd show it off in multiplayer, driving it on my own, and just show you what I feel like are its biggest strengths and its biggest weaknesses. And for anyone who has driven this car recently, these are probably fairly obvious. Its biggest strength, by far, is in its top speed, which is close to 238 miles per hour. I mean, which is honestly faster than a lot of even higher-end B-class cars. So you might think, well, why is this car so low in its class? Because its drifting is absolutely abysmal. As you will see later, not only is its radius quite bad, but also it loses so much speed when drifting that there's really not much you can do around, say, the 360 degree Cairo turn, which mathematically is more of a 270 degree turn, but I digress. So on any track that has turns that you have to drift for a long time around, you're going to be losing so much speed and the acceleration is not that great either that it's really difficult to get up to that high top speed at really any point in most of the tracks, as you will see throughout these races. Its nitro efficiency is actually not terrible. It's not the best either. It's rather average, I would say, honestly. That isn't necessarily a downside to this car, but it's not really an upside either. It's just kind of mediocre and a thing that exists. Now, if it were worse, this car would be even worse, but because it's okay, that is part of the reason that this car is slightly better than the Ford GT, which is the other low-end B-class car that has high top speed, but but poor drifting. The races in this video were taken from a few different seasons, one of which just a regular season, a couple are from the slipstream season, such as this one, as I fail a 360, let's forget about that, and the last few races in this video are in the current ghost season. So you can see how the car performs in a variety of situations, and Slipstream does definitely help it. It at least makes it easier to get up to and stay at its top speed after general turns and stuff, but it really doesn't do anything to negate the very, very bad drifting of this car. And if you are in front, there's nobody whose Slipstream you can surf, and then you can't get up to top speed too quickly around the turns again. But here, thankfully, I was able to hold on just enough and was able to come in this race in first place, just a frame ahead of this maxed opponent. Apollo N. And in this next race on Rome, we're facing two more Apollo Ns, as well as a Huracan, an Apex, and some Corvettes, too. The CN is one of those cars that you can certainly win a good number of races in if you really try hard enough, but it won't be consistent, it won't be easy, and it heavily relies on the tracks that you get, I would say. Because some tracks like Rome, for example, are actually not terrible. We typically think of Rome as a twisty track, but the good news is there aren't any like extremely tight turns that you have to deal with. Most of them are pretty wide and you don't have to drift for too long around them and therefore the car is able to get up to its top speed a lot of the time. So like right here, we're already up to the car's top speed and we're now in first place. Compare that to a track like Osaka, for example. That one has a lot of more tight turns. One in particular, the hairspin turn that this car will definitely struggle with and struggle with getting up to its top speed outside of it as well. Now, if you have a slipstream season, that is kind of negated which is why some tracks can certainly be better in slipstream than they would be otherwise. But on the other end of the spectrum, tracks like Himalayas, which have hardly any really sharp turns, are going to be much better for this car. In fact, we will see one of those later on in this video. And here again, we have beat an Apollo N very narrowly, this time by three tenths of a second. And now we're moving on to Nile River. This is where I'm going to show you this car's strengths and weaknesses all at once, and you will see exactly what I mean. Nile River has always been one of my favorite tracks in the game. A while back, when Gameloft was running YouTuber Cups, I did the Shelby on, you guessed it, Nile River, because I really liked it. And this track, for 95% of it, is really good for cars like the CN that have a high top speed, it has wide sweeping curves, except for the last 5% of the track. You see, throughout all of this section, I'm able to maintain above 200, above 220 miles per hour even, 
for a large portion of it, and therefore this 911 GT3 RS, as much as he is trying to keep up to me, cannot really do so as we come over here, gain a lot of momentum, gain a lot of speed, and begin pulling away from the cars behind us. I have to admit that during this race, this lulled me into a false sense of security. I was just pulling further and further ahead, and right here is where things start to fall apart a little bit. You typically don't have enough nitro to go through there just with nitro. You go up this ramp and you're looking fine. But then comes the 360 degree turn. Look how low my speed drops. 120 miles per hour. The Corvette and the 911 pass me like I am standing still and I'm unable to even reach 200 miles per hour soon after the turn. And then we come in third place from just being ahead first by a long shot. This exact same issue happened to me on Nevada. You know at the end of one of those Nevada tracks where you have a pretty long straight section after the tunnel and then you have that really sharp hairpin turn at the end? Yeah, the same thing happened to me in this car. One race I was in first leading up to that point and then there I went around that turn, hit the wall, did not have enough nitro to get up to speed after it because my shockwave ran out before I was able to, and it was slipstream which made it even worse, so all the people behind me got on my slipstream, and I think three or four people passed me in the last second and I went down after just being in first three seconds ago. It is kind of sad, honestly, and that is why this car is going to be a very polarizing experience. Some tracks, like right here on Himalayas, you're going to do wonderful. You're going to pull away, assuming you don't wreck into a wall or something like that, and everything will be fine and dandy. But on most tracks, you will not have this easy of a time, so your success with this car will largely depend on the lottery of track selection. I definitely recommend giving it a shot though. This is one of the more interesting B-Class cars to me just because of how staggeringly different its stats are from either being really good to being really bad in its class and just makes for a really interesting driving experience and really fun to talk about as well. And now we're moving on to our final race in the video which is on Shanghai where I'm going to be showing some things you can use on tracks like this one to maybe negate some of the speed loss that you could have around some turns. You want to try to get as many barrel rolls as you can at the beginning, especially on this track. Thankfully, I was able to get two on the first two and therefore get up to my top speed and start passing all these Huracans and stuff, which go a good, what, 16 miles per hour faster than me? Or 15, I should say. Car's max speed is 237, pretty much exactly. Compared to the Huracans 222, you want to use nitro, perfect nitro round curves as much as you can. Here, I didn't drift because that would have lost a lot more speed than I did. I'm able to shockwave up to my speed out of it. You saw through there, I only got down to around 160 miles per hour. If I had tried drifting, it probably would have been 130 or so. Here again, I drift a little bit so I can shockwave out of this turn. You want to try to stay above 200 miles per hour as much as you can in this car. That might not be easy a lot of the time, but if you can do that, in a lot of cases, you will be okay. Again, not drifting at all, saving up for shockwave. This is one of the best ways to drive the car. So as we actually managed to pass someone toward the end of the race, my general review about this car is that it has great top speed, but bad handling, and is therefore not the easiest car to drive. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt Forza and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!